Good morning, YouTube. So let's get up here and check on our load. Oh, yeah. That is how you secure down a hazmat load, guys. Didn't even shift with us uh, going on the ice. Like I said, my trailer, y'all watched last video, y'all know I have to drive on some black ice to get it here. And my trailer swung around. And uh, this load has not budged. So yeah, shout out to you, Jason, if you're watching the channel. Uh, very well done. Oh yeah. Uh, all right, so we're here in Houston. I went home last night, got to shower up and get groomed all up. Uh, our dock, dock number seven, we're about to get in there. So apparently I had an appointment time on this load. It is 8.30 in the morning. Apparently my appointment time is not until noon, but they're going to go ahead and get me in, thank God. So, I need to go ahead and get these placards off of here, just so I don't forget, because I have a bad habit of forgetting. And then I have a load I'm picking up in uh, Deer Park, Texas later, that is going down to Laredo, which is basically Houston to Laredo. Typical. I think that one pays 1,200 bucks. It's probably about 350, $4 a mile, somewhere in there. I missed out on the one that was 450, because of the ice. And the whole little setback, but it is what it is. Hope y'all enjoyed the uh, cold start this morning. It is uh, 22 degrees. And she did not budge. So let's get into this dock, get unloaded. So today, uh, we're gonna go pick this load up. And um, I'm gonna go pick up some fuel filters for the truck. There we go. I'm gonna go pick those up, and then um, I gotta go run some errands because today is payday. But my direct deposit is not set up yet. I had a delay with Landstar. And so they give us two cards. They give us one card for, uh, obviously for fuel. And then they give us what's called a settlement card, which is for, uh, for our funds to be transferred on to. Let's not make this difficult. Let's do this as a 45 degree. So when you're backing guys, you have really three main angles you have a straight line you have a 90 degree angle which is like this and you try to get into the dock like that or you have like a 45 which is kind of slanted to get into the dock like that those a lot of y'all have reached out to me asking about uh, truck driving school that is the one thing they are going to teach you then of course there's a parallel parking, but that's that's it's a whole nother ordeal. I'm trying to get around this Peterbilt next week. One of those low thick of my jeans back there on the ground. 
should have moved it out of the way. They would not be teaching you all that maneuver, how to uh, back up and open your door. They're gonna teach you how to open your window and look out the window to do your backing. So, don't mind me. Some people say it's a safety hazard or whatever, but who does everything 100% safe? There's no law, there's no rule against it, so just gotta be careful when I do it. Plus, I need to buy a new actuator for uh, this window here. Oh, it's either the actuator, I think it's probably, well the switch is broken, so I'm gonna try the switch first and see if that works. Passenger side works, it's not the driver side. All right, now we're lined up to it. Can I get it back around? Uh, we're finally around this Peterbilt now. Yeah, let's go ahead and get around it. Get lined up with it perfectly straight. Of course, there's no lines on the ground, so it makes it that much more difficult. But they're getting this in and out of here, so kudos to them. And I talked to the lady in the office. If y'all watched last video, you know I was supposed to have dropped this off yesterday, but I was stuck in Baton Rouge due to the weather. And uh, the road's been shut down because of the black ice. But she said they did come in yesterday. It just wasn't until about noon or so. Let me know that I probably wouldn't have been able to finish out those other loads anyway. Or pick them up and get them knocked out. Ice storm messed up everything. All right, we're in the dock. All right, cool. Let's see how long this takes us. So y'all can hear me. Uh, I've been booking loads all morning. Um, so they are really getting it in back there. Uh, so the plan is as of now is we're going to go, uh, pick up this load, this next load and go down to Laredo. And then we're picking up one of those loads, that load that last week that, um, when they didn't load all the product <laughs> that picked up in Laredo and the and I was possibly gonna to have to turn around and go get it. Well, they're shipping out the rest of their product. So she called me and asked me if I wanna take it out there. Uh, this is one of the agents that I'm in, I'm in really good standings with. And so we're gonna be doing another one of those Home Depot loads going out to Atlanta over the weekend. And I see another load coming out of Atlanta. So I'm trying to determine if I wanna take the load straight through and get it there Friday night and I see another load that picks up Saturday morning going to Monroe, Louisiana, which is about an hour or two hours east of Shreveport, Louisiana. That pays 1200 bucks, it's like 220 a mile, but it'd be some good weekend money. Um, I still have plenty of hours on my clock because I've been sitting all week. And so um, I could do that and really get my revenue up, but I may have to do a 34 hour break so it picks up Saturday, delivers first thing Sunday. And I have to do a 34 hour break. Or do I want to go home on the weekend and deliver the load Monday morning? Hmm, that is uh, the dilemma. But I'm gonna check out my hours and kind of see just how the week goes and it'll determine what I do. 
Um, I do want to get the truck back home so I can go through it uh, thoroughly again, just to make sure we don't have any more uh, breakdowns or anything. So that's the real reason. I don't want to go home just to go home, but I want to go home to uh, to cater to the truck. Because uh, I have all my tools and everything at home. I just feel more comfortable doing it at home. Uh, if I need to go pick up something and I have t something taken apart, I can just jump in my pickup truck and go do what I need to do rather than trying to do it on the road or on a 34-hour break. So I don't know. We'll kind of see how this week goes and it'll determine what we end up doing. But uh, sounds like... Oh, never, never mind. Nope. Never mind. It's still unloading me. Uh, I've been making phone calls all morning. Uh, there is a potential opportunity that came across my radar. Uh, if y'all watched my video of me when I was in transit to go pick up this truck when I flew out to Connecticut, I told you guys that I met a uh, an elderly couple on a flight that really took interest into me. And um, they were telling me about some freight uh, they have a, a company down there in the Houston area to where they are the, uh, they make the product and they have their own trucks to move that product. And he offered me a position. He said, I would have to have my own numbers in order to move this product. This product, I'll be a direct customer. I mean, a direct, uh, a direct contract with them. But he also offered me some other opportunities to where, uh, he offered me a company position. I told him, no, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do it. He offered me a position to where I could, you know, um, have my own numbers and then contract the work to me. I told him, I don't have my own numbers right now. And the insurance rates are just way too stupid, ridiculous to even think about doing that. You know, like I'm talking like $40,000 a year to start insurance. And uh, he offered me some other opportunities, um, like just leasing on to their company DOT number and still doing it as a direct uh, shipper, kind of an ordeal. And so we're gonna look into that and with these new laws coming in into place, it's, I, I wanna see how that's gonna pan out first. And so uh, he did offer me that. And so we'll see what we end up doing to where I might it, it'll be a few months. It'll be like over the summer, but it'll be, uh, it'll have me taking this truck and uh, leaving Landstar. So I don't know. So we're going to be working out some numbers and just to kind of see how it goes. But I will be hauling tanker, full on tanker. And uh, he offered me some dedicated runs to where I could be at home every day running tanker. So that sounds, that sounds really good. Weekends off. And then because of the commodity that I'm hauling, I, like if it rains or if it gets too, too crazy with the cold weather, uh, then I would have the day off. So I don't know if there'll be a, a pay, pay the day rate or how that works. So just some stuff we're working on. So um, I don't know, guys. We might be leaving Landstar this summer. Um, it's, go it's gonna be a while before, I, before that even happens. I still gotta meet with the guy. Um, because the people I met on the plane, they still, I guess they run the company, own the company, but their son like runs it, you know, like uh, head on. And so I talked to him, I was like, hi, you know, my name is Shimon Spencer. He said, and I said, I met your parents on the flight. He said, oh yeah, 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 they tell me, they tell me all about you. They tell me about your YouTube channel and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he was like, yeah, like what could I do for you, you know? And so, uh, so apparently they've been checking me out on the channel. So they kind of see my work ethic and what I do. And so uh, they're eager to possibly work with me. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. We might have something cooking behind the scenes. Like I tell y'all, there's stuff, there's stuff going on behind the scenes that I don't always put on the channel. But that is something that's brewing behind the scenes. And I do have something else that's possibly, maybe it's a long shot brewing behind the scenes. But I don't know yet. So uh, for right now, we're looking just at what's right here in front of us. And so once they finish uh, uploading me, we're going to get on up the road, probably a good 15 miles or so. Go pick up this next load. Change these fuel filters. Uh, get a really good close look at that exhaust. And uh, we're going to go from there. So, and like I said, I have some errands and stuff to run in between. So I'm not going to get everything on camera, but I'll get what I can get. So right now, let's get this situated. And then uh, we'll be on out of here. Oh, 
told you guys, I always forget to take the placards off. I don't know why. No, I never pull off with the placard still on there. It's just that I always forget. Oh yeah, we're empty. I always forget to take them off while I'm waiting to get unloaded. Whenever I'm walking to go open my, open or close my doors or whatever, that's why I'm like, oh no, the placards, I forgot. I could have been making use of my time, better use of my time. All right, let's get these packets off of here and uh, get some miles behind us. Train. Um, says we're 17 miles away, so as soon as this clears up, uh, we'll go pick this up.
line side backing like a uh i would say like a boss but we're in there we didn't hit nothing shout out to the uh other landstar driver for looking out for me uh i don't have my little back window back there anymore so i cannot cheat on my blind side backing so but we got in there it took a second but uh, of course as soon as i want to get in there the truck next to me is gone so it would have been a lot easier had he been not been there but it is what it is so uh we'll see how long this takes hopefully we'll be out of here in no time I know, right? <laughs> we're loaded. So we're picking up at a uh, hazmat place. Why is there an electro lit energy drink uh, box truck here? like that one time we picked up the hazmat load for the monster drink uh, additives hazmat load flammable hazmat load energy drinks that's why I don't drink them anyway let's get back to the yard and then I uh, got a few errands to run and then we'll uh, get on out of here back to the yard uh so we went ahead and picked up i'm sorry delivered that load first picked up our other one and uh like i told y'all earlier i have some errands to run the kids have an appointment i gotta take them to and so uh i'm gonna go and knock out that so i'm gonna go go up to the house grab the wife and the kids go knock out their appointment i got some banking stuff to do and then i gotta go pick up the fuel filters um and we're gonna try that to see to see if that's the problem. Um, so with this fuel with this fuel filter system here, it has what's called the Donaldson fuel filter system, not the ones that your typical uh, clear bowl. 
is on top and it's got the filter on the inside. These hang from the bottom. And so, uh, and they're right on the other side of the frame. So this is not the kind of field filter you can just look at it and tell, oh, it's, you know, it's bad. So we're gonna try to replace both, it's two filters. We're gonna replace both of them. And I did notice, uh, I was just kind of tugging at some of the hoses and clamps. There is a rubber hose. It looks like it goes into the, um, into the, uh, either, well, coming from the air compressor, probably going into the intake, I'm thinking. And so I'm going to, uh, see about replacing that hose or replacing that clamp because i can tell that clamp is bad and so i don't know if the clamp ate into the hose as well or if the hose is just bad so i'm going to look at the clamp but most likely i'm just going to try to replace the whole hose if it's just a simple uh quick little ordeal and so i'm going to check that out as well and i'm going to uh try cleaning the turbo from where they replaced that um so you have the turbo you have like the flange right there and then you have the flex pipe. And so right there where that flange is that goes into the turbo, I'm gonna to try to uh, to clean the turbo right there. Uh, Cause there is, there was soot there from, from, from the repair the other day. So I'm gonna try those, those three things and see if we get our power back. Um, Cause right now I, I can't really push it more than about 55 to 60 miles an hour and I'm not really getting that much boost. And so I'm wondering if it's two different problems or just one, one problem altogether. So uh, we're gonna do some diagnosing later, but first we got some errands to run. And it'll be dark when I do that, do everything and it's gonna be pointless at recording. And so uh, I'm probably not gonna record it. So next time I do a PM or fuel filters or something like that, I'll be sure to do a, a video on it in the daytime so you guys can see. Uh, what I'm talking about but uh, yes yeah, so I'm gonna look at those three things and see if that's the problem one good things about one good thing about these old engines is everything like, I, like I've said about these things four bolts and it's replaced and uh, so everything's pretty simple and so that is my uh, on my little to-do list but guys we're about to discontinue the merch for the previous uh, truck that we had with the International Lone Star. If you wanna get you a shirt, get you a hoodie, uh, make sure you go to LoneStarTexasRanger.shop and go get you one before we discontinue it. We will be coming out with a new design pretty soon. And if you have put in an order, um, I'm just waiting to get back home so I can go pick them up because they've been we had to print some more for the, for the sizes y'all uh, purchased. And uh, as soon as I get home, we'll ship them right off to you. And uh, I just got a text earlier today. I think they're I think they're done, so I just need to get back home. Because I'm having to do everything because my wife's car is still out of commission. Um, I think I finally found the parts that I need. And the parts are over $1,000. But uh, I think I finally found the parts that I need. I'm going to make sure they're the correct parts. And if they are, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get them. And then find somebody who can do it because a lot of people don't want to touch that air ride suspension on the Mercedes. That has been another difficulty, trying to find somebody who'll do it. I have a neighbor who said he'll look at it to see if he can do it, who is actual, like a, who is a certified uh, tech, certified mechanic. But even he was like, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of skeptical. Cause I got to replace the, um, the shocks, struts, whatever's under there. Um, the airbags and the air compressor that inflates the airbags on her Mercedes. So we're just trying to find the right parts and everything. But so yeah, so I'm having to be uh, be the chauffeur until we get that all situated. So, well yeah, guys, um, let me know. Comment down below. What do y'all think about this whole Landstar ordeal? Should I switch it over to Tanker and get my own um, get my own customer? Like I said, I'm not going to go and get my own numbers. It's just way too expensive and it doesn't make sense right now with the economy the way it is. So I'll be trying to figure out some options with the um, with the customer. And we'll kind of go from there. So comment down be below. Let me know what you guys think. Should I stay with Landstar or should I dip? And there is another opportunity that I know of too, but it's hauling a flatbed. It's also kind of a local gig too. And from what I hear, it pays really good. 
So, I don't know. We have, we have other options coming up uh, in the summer. Summer of uh, 2024. But for right now, we're going to stick it out with Landstar for the next couple of months. And uh, we might be making a move, guys. I don't know. Nothing against Landstar. It's just that I'm trying to find something a little bit more consistent at home. And without having a truck note, that really helps our uh, revenue or not having to, you know, come out of that money. So, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think down there in the comment section below. Um, thank y'all for all the advice in the comments. I have been reading them. And um, we're working on uh, finding a trusty local mechanic just for kind of like emergency kind of repairs in the Houston area. Um, Brad is still our number one mechanic, but I'm just trying to find somebody a little bit closer. Yeah, it's like for immediate repairs, or like emergency kind of stuff. And um, I have been in contact with Robbie, the guy who has the parts truck, who he's get, basically gifting us the interior of that truck. Uh, so y'all think Robbie down there in the comment section, uh, let's tell him thanks Robbie. You know, you're awesome Robbie, something along those lines. And Brad too. Y'all gonna shout out Brad down there in the comment section because without those two, we wouldn't be doing, we wouldn't be really doing too much. And, um, yeah, we're trying to get some things popping. Um, there is some, some stuff I got my eye on coming up in 2024. I can't really talk about it too much, but there's some stuff I got my eye on. It'll really uh, be different for the channel, really different. So y'all stick around definitely for that. Uh, but yeah, guys, if there's some different things that y'all want to see on the channel, some new things or some stuff that I have done, haven't done in a while that you want to see again, comment down below and let me know what y'all think. But guys, let me go ahead and uh, and get on my uh, to-do list. This is Lone Star Texas Ranger signing off. I will catch you guys at noon Central Standard Time on the next one.